Here in our next example, we're going to show another situation where the hybridization is only partial. Not all of the available electrons that are ready for bonding will be used in a hybridization um, orbital, but some of them will remain in the traditional p orbitals and make bonds that way. So here, for example, we have C2H2, which is ethyne, also called acetylene, and that means we have two carbons and two hydrogens joining together. Here we have what we're trying to do and what the Lewis structure looks like, and we are indeed seeing a triple bond between the carbons and just a single bond between each of the carbon and the hydrogens. Again, the octet rule is followed. We have eight electrons that are partially uh, possessed by the left carbon and the eight, eight electrons partially possessed by the, by the right carbon. In other words, there's a sharing mechanism taking place, and some of the time hydrogen will then have two um, electrons and so that is a stable molecule but that's not exactly the true picture of what's going on what's really going on is we have the situation here we have six electrons in carbon two of them in the 1s orbital they're not available for bonding two in the 2s orbital and two in the 2p orbitals now again in a situation like this there would only be two electrons available to make bonds what's going to happen instead is that one of these electrons in the s orbitals is going to be promoted to the empty spot in the p orbitals like that in such a way that there are now four electrons available for bonding but those four electrons existing one of them in the 2s orbital and the other three in the 2p orbitals cannot form the proper physical structure to make ethyne. So what, it, what happens instead is that two of the orbitals will be hybridized. One to make the bond with the hydrogen and the other one to make the bond with the other carbon on the other side and then the two p orbitals, one in the z direction straight up and down, one in the x direction in and out of the board, those will remain intact and those are now able to make pi bonds by simply bending towards the other carbon on the other side, like this and like that. So that's how the, pi, the, the uh, p orbitals will form pi bonds, one above the molecule like that and one in the plane of the molecule. So let me show how that works. So from here we have the four electrons. Two of them will then go into hybridized bonds Remember that the sp hybridization is a linear molecule and that's exactly what we see here. We have the carbon in the middle, hydrogen over there, and we see the linearity of the two uh, hybridized bonds the, uh, or orbitals, the sp orbitals, in a straight line. And then the other two orbitals are still the traditional p orbitals, one in the x direction and one in the z direction, straight up in the z direction, in and out in the x direction. And then the hybridized orbitals will then be a linear uh, set in the y direction. So what will then happen is we have the carbon with a single hydrogen in one direction, we have a carbon with a single hydrogen in the same linear direction in the opposite direction there. We still have the p orbitals, so we still have a p orbital in the z direction and a p orbital in the x direction perpendicular to the line in which the carbon hydrogen exists. Same for this carbon right here, so we have a, a z orbital, pz, and a px orbital, like so. And of course, in here, we form a bond that is also formed by the hybridized sp orbital that then joins together. So we'll have two electrons that exist here, two electrons that exist here, two electrons that exist here, and one electron in each of the p orbitals. So this would be the, the, the pz, and then here we have the px. So we have the PZ and we have the PX, like so. And only one electron in each of those orbitals, which then are able to bend together and form the pi bonds, as we'll see in just a moment. I'm going to put that here, put this down. So what happens is now the Z orbitals will bend together and form a pi bond above and below the plane. Like so. So this is the this is a pi bond made by the z pz orbitals and then we'll have an x another pi bond made by the um, x orbitals the px orbitals which then will bend one in front and one in the back like so and so that would be another pi bond so what you can see now is the hybridization takes place. Only two of the four orbitals available will reshape themselves into orbitals that look like this. If we don't remember again what they look like, let me quickly draw them. So we have 
the situation like this, where two of the orbitals will form like that. These are the hybridized orbitals, which have a lobe in one direction and a tiny lobe in the other direction. You have another one that points this way and a small lobe in this direction. So on this side, you'll get the bond with the hydrogen. On this side, you'll get the bond with the other carbon. The other carbon will look like this. We have a hybridized orbital that will bend this way with a small little tail in this direction. A hybridized orbital will bend this way with a small little tail here. Here, you'll bond with the hydrogen, and those two will come together and form a bond, one electron in each, so they will overlap and form that connecting bond. This will then be a sigma bond made by the hybridized orbitals. Now, the other ones will then come from the Z, P, Z orbitals, which will bend up this way and bend down this way, and then the X orbitals will bend in front and behind, and that will then form the other two bonds, giving you a total of three bonds between the, the carbons, the carbon atoms, but they're not traditionally what we expect like these, equal in, in type. We have one sigma bond made by the hybridized orbitals and two pi bonds made by the P sub X and P sub Z orbitals. And there you can see how it's not always a clean, pretty picture, but after you, after you kind of take a look and see how they physically exist, this is how they make that happen. And so in this case, only two of the four orbitals reshape themselves to make hybridized orbitals, and the other two are the traditional orbitals that bend over and form the pipons.